um, a tour of our, our ID and IT showroom. Um, I'll hand over yep. to Joseph. Yep. Joseph's one of our um, ID, IT um, product directors, mm -hmm. responsible for laptops and monitors. Yes. He'll give you a good guided tour of the space. Yeah, overall, the products. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming. Um, so I'll just go through the first of the some of the key uh, products that we have in this showroom. So, oh, actually MG's here. All right. So, yeah. so um, I'd like to introduce MG. Um, he's our um, information display product director. So he's going to go through the um, the information display products of the magnets and LEDs and stuff. And also I'm going to cover that for the my products for monitors and the laptops. So hand it over to MG. Thanks, so, MG. Yeah. So my name is MG, and then this is the, you know, the our latest you know the technology product which is called magnet. And then this is chip on board LED. We have. 0.7, 0 0.9, and the 1.2 pitch. And then this one is the uh, really uh, easy to install the product because it's cabless. So we have the cable on the just bottom side, which is the main cabinet, and you can just stack the, you know, the cabinet to install the product. And also the because of the LG uh, patent you know, technology that we have low grade scale, and we also have the we also also have a black coating on the product, so it actually give, uh, gives the, you know, the experience of the real true color of the, you know, the product. So, and also we have not just you know, the, uh, this product, but also we have a residence product that you can use in your house as a, as a cinema. And also we have all in one product that has the chip on board, and the system on chip, and also speakers on it. So as you can see, this is used for the outdoor. Uh, but as you can see, um, you hardly can see any edge on between the uh, the cabinets. So, and also, as you mentioned, this is um, 0 0.7 millimeters of the pixel. Mm -hmm. So you hardly see any pixels from the distance. Actually, in outdoors, from your distance, is considered to be very close distance. Um, so uh, that's what it is. So you hardly see any pixels or the edge. This fine, this point. So uh, as I mentioned, you know, the, some you know, the who, who has you know the let's say, the money that they can they can buy for their house for the cinema and also you know the yeah, is retail buying this like shopping centers corporate yes co corporate and the shopping centers like because they want to show you know the yeah. really you know the uh, operating great, uh, great feature of the you know the advertisement or something like that they actually buy this product and also in corporate they can use the meeting room solution for this product because so does this integrate with a with a content control system so if you're running advertising yes. to it you can run it off your system yes it's yeah okay system. And the, as you can see, you know, the, just just mentioned that it, not like other, you know, LED, you can hardly see the dots over here. So it, yeah. it looks like just one set of, you know, the display. That's the other better of the model. You can clearly see the difference mm -hmm. between the other LED solutions we have and with the, our magnet half premium LED. So that one's also very good, but you know, you can clearly see the difference of the picture quality. That one is, um, how, how big is the pixel? That's 2.5, uh, 2.5 UTG and this is 0 0.7. So the, yeah. oh, so one max thing of technology difference is how, how narrow that pitch is that you can make for the LED. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is the transparent OLED. And actually you can see the behind the, you know, the display. So the transparent is about the 38%. So this is really you know, the unique product that we have in the market because uh, there's no other brand that you knows this you know, the display, but this, we are a product product. And the usual thing that you can actually use for the retail to give the, you know, the really special experience to the customer. And also there's you know, the, a lot of reference of these products. One of the case I can explain, explain is that we have really premium bakery store in Korea. They actually put this on the window so they can actually see the you know the advertisement, but you know they can also see outside and and also in kitchen area, they actually try to show the how the clean the kitchen is, but also they put this display to show the you know the advertisements together. What do you use the Crestron box for? Uh, what was it? Crestron. What are you using this for? As the controller? Yeah, yeah, for the you know the you know the controller and the display the you know the okay. sometimes. And here, the, here, this is the outdoor display, which is the IP rated I-56. 
as you can see, uh, this is brighter than other other display because 4,000 nits. The reason that we took the 4,000 nits is that trying to make the, you know, the brightness constant of the brightness in outdoor because it's really important to see out the you know, display in outdoor because of the sunlight. And also, uh, this is sample lens, so you can protect you know, the product. So we usually use this product for the drive through and then there's like outdoor display uh, in front of the hotels to give the information. And this one is 1.5 millimeters all-in-one touch, uh, all-in-one LED display. So as I mentioned, you know the uh, this includes the system on chip, and also they have speakers. So you can just install this product without you know the, any backend solution or system. So you can install this product, you can use it right away. And the, the benefit of this product is that we actually give this set in the flat case. There's two brackets that you know you can install on the wall, and then. It will just take about three to four hours to install the product. So you know the as, as in, in Australia, labor costs are really high, but you know the, you can save the cost of the, you know, the installation, and then you can use it right away. That's the you know, benefit of this product. And also we have this. This is one thirty six inches, but also we have one seventy one, which is ultra wide, and we also have the one sixty three inches. So this this one we actually use in our boardroom. So. Now I'd like to um, take you through to um, our IT products. So obviously we have set up as a office setup um, as a concept. So first thing is our um, gram. So this is our gram style that we um, first introduced in CES early this year. So as you can see, um, there's a bit of lights that requires, but this is actually white color, but because of the texture, it actually changes all the colors uh, based on the reflections. So that's our 14 inch gram style. And it's connected to our 40 inch uh, 5K mon ultra wide monitor. Um, so what's good about it is not only the resolution itself, but also um, it's got two Thunderbolt uh, ports at the back, which you can connect with the one um, cable. So we are trying to promote this as a one cable solution. So not only that, it connects the laptops with the monitors to display the um, the videos and the audios, but also it can charge your laptops, and also it can, um, you know, this actually do everything, including powers, uh, audios, and visuals, and everything together. Does this take the WebOS now, the new software that you've actually WebOS? Um, you know, if we include the WebOS, we consider that as a smart monitor, which we actually okay. have it yeah. on the on, um, over there. So um, yeah, so that's our forty-inch monitor, and then. I like to highlight the um, uh, ergonomic stands. So this comes with a, as a one package. Um, so as a one package, it includes the two screens and also the um, arm stands, ergonomic stands at the back. So again, this is all connected into one. So um, you know, there's a two way of connecting the two screens into your laptops. One is using two um, you know different inputs and connect with the laptop or use only one to do. And in order to do that, you need to have a feature called daisy chain. So what it is, is that this is the power cable and this is the USB-C. So as you can see, only one cable is connected through um, display these two videos. And what it does is that it goes around here and then there's a display port at the back that connects with these two monitors. So what it is, is the daisy chain actually enables you to connect between two monitors and then you can save the, the interface and the, the input from two to one. So that's the, um, the data chain feature. The other one is the, uh, again, this is all um, you know, connected with the ergonomics, using the ergonomic stand. This is the called the uh, dual monitor. Um, so 28 inch. It's actually the size of um, using the two 22 inch screens uh, from top to bottom. So what, what is good about is the, um, you know, all, you, know um, you can use this as a um, single screen, but we heavily recommend, and there's lots of demands of using this as a second screen as well. So good, good thing about this is the, um, you know, whenever the, the programmers, um, they use the, um, the, the, usually they use the windows, um, try to position that as a horizontal instead of 
uh, I'm sorry, um, into vertical windows position rather than that of horizontal because um, you know that's the better for them to actually minimize the head movement also that you can compare the two different codes so that you can uh, find any sort of um, errors or stuff. So this is actually a great uh, product to demonstrate into in this, um, the vertical windows spaces. Next one is the, um, our um, smart monitor. So 43 inch 4K resolution. Uh, we are actually planning to launch this product from uh, um, March next year. So uh, all the smart ranges. So far, um, you know, we're trying to highlight this as uh, the white colored um, the monitor, so that you know, not these days, a um, lot of brands are promoting them, uh, uh, promoting the lifestyle kind of products, and this is also one of the, the things. So we're using the uh, web OS, of course, the latest web OS for that is same platform as the smart TVs. And also, um, you know, using the 43 inch, not only that you can use as a monitor, but also as a, you know, to, as a sort of TVs with the streaming. What's the display range on this? So this one's 43. Yeah, uh, but also size. we do have the other what models. What resolution does it go up to? It's, it's, uh, it's all 4K. I mean, it's these, all two 4K. Are, these two are 4K. 4K. And the right here is Full HD. So we do have a range of the screens from 25 inch, 27 inch, 32 and 43. And the 32 and uh, 43 have a 4K um, you know, models. Uh, we do have the Full HD range as well, which is more affordable range. Um, this one's 27, but we do have an option for 25 and 32 Full HD as what well. What sort of price are you looking at for this? This, um, in, in Australian dollars, um, we're looking at as a 899 price point for the 43. And uh, this, um, um, sorry, this 32 inch, uh, we're looking at um, the 699 price point, and the Full HD is um, it's around uh, sub $400 for the Full HDs. And we also have, of course, with the come up with the remote, small remote. So um, compared to the um, the magic remote that is given for the TVs, this is more simple because you know why we highlight the the scenes that people use for this smart monitor is more at their rooms rather than uh, putting into the living room and um, place place. So in that case, you don't need to have you know much of the the stuff, so you can. You know, people can lie on bed, not really getting out and use the remote to turn it on and to watch the, the streams and so on. So. Yep. And next, moving on, is our um, the gaming monitor range. Um, this is our 45 OLED. Um, this one is has been, um, you know, we actually revealed this in the, uh, the CES early this year. But we are also um, trying to um, replace this with a new model, that uh, with a new design and uh, more specs on this, which will be first revealed in the next CES, of course. But again, um, this is the world's most curved uh, monitor out there. It uses 800R radius, so which means that you only need 800 centimeters of the, um, the 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 radius, you know, to make a full circle around. So smaller the number means more curved. So 800R is um, over anybody. Um, so for example, Samsung's using the, uh, um, their OLED screen that is 1000R and we are 800. And this, as you can see, it's stunning, um, you know, looking with a you know, great curvature. It actually not only looking great, but also I'm using this as uh, my office desk um, monitor, is that it actually saves you space of the width because it's so curved. So the only downside of doing that is the, um, there was a ones that I took that as for the demo units and I need to use for the flat screen. And uh, for some reason, when I look at this flat screen, it looks the, the other way around <laughs> because I'm so used to this, um, you know, the immersive. Um, What's the difference curvature. between that monitor there and a 43 inch, this one here? This one's OLED. No, this one here and a 43 inch TV. Yeah. What's, what's the difference between, between a normal, normal 43-inch TV? Okay, so the 43, um, okay, so of course TV has the TV tuner inside, 
Yeah, so it's yeah. minus two big children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but also that, you know, um, it has a different lookings, and also we got this white design. So, yeah. 43 inch TV is usually for the small screen TVs to um, use it as a main kind, um, you know, main TVs, but this one we are, you know, trying to do that. And also, not only that, we have a webcam readiness as well on top, as you can see. It's not enabled, but we do sell the uh, webcams uh, as an accessory, as a separate. So, as you can see on top, there's a USB C that you can, you know, plug it in for the webcams, which um, the TVs, um, of course, don't have that feature. Yep. Yeah, and then um, I'll pass it on to the MG again okay. for the interactive screen. So if you see here, you know, we have interactive screen that called Crato board. So the most, you know, the, in Australia, actually, you know, the, a lot of schools is adopting our digital you know, technology. And then the, Australia is one of the, you know, the biggest who actually, uh, country who adopted you know, technology uh, digital. So the most important thing is the, you know, the writing and the sharing and the management of the, you know, the display. So we have our own you know, the R&D who actually developed the writing and the management solution. Mm -hmm. So this, this is a, called a, a Lab 2.0, uh, which is going to be launched next Q2. So we have a lot of, you know, the, a, a lot of pictures, they can use it. For example, let me just you know, just bring this in here. Like, we can open the, one of the you know, features is that we can open the web browser here. And then let's put Google. So this is what they use at schools, right? Schools, yes. Okay. So if, uh, this is a new product that we launched in this year. So this is this product is you know trying to adopt what you know teachers really need in this market. And now we didn't have the product like this one before, but we are we are trying to show the you know, how she show with the, you know the, this ID in the this what uh, education. So. Oh, nice. so for example, you can do You can just bring the, you know, the photo from the, you know, the internet, and also, also you can bring the, you know, the PDF file, and then you, know, the, you can write the, you know, the let's open the open board here, for example. Okay, you can see the, you know, the let's create this one. Bring the PDF on the background, and then you can actually light down the you know, the uh, it says like five. You can actually write down the you know, the answers on here, and then you can also save the you know the, as a PDF. And also there's sticky note and all the you know, the features over up here, and then here. <coughs> And not just you know the photos that you can bring from the internet, you can actually bring the wording from the you know the internet and then you can modify on the right away. Let me show you just one case. Yeah. You can put in the URL here, and then you can just connect again here by clicking it. Bring the you know the audience, and then you can actually modify this audience right down again. Okay, that's the you know the one of the you know the you are developing, and we as I mentioned, we have own our own you know the people who actually deliver the house. Okay. So, and then second thing is the sharing is really popular in Crestman. So you can just easily you know the put the six numbers on the application. On the mobile or the tab, and then for the laptop, you can just put the URL to share the your content. Mm -hmm. So if I open here, so there's device content, which is my one. So if I try to share from the my mobile phone, there's you know the whether it's asking whether you want to offset it. So if you offset it, and actually you know the, I can share my screen right away. So it's very easy to you know the share and then write. And also, what sizes are these available in? 
Oh, we have from, we have 55, 65, 75, 86, and the 98 is coming. So we have the whole range of the, you know, the So what was that small size? 30? 50, 55. 55. Yeah, this is the, you know, the small size. Yeah. yeah. And currently, I, because I have to contact this laptop, I cannot show you, the, you know, the DMS, but we say, you know, edge connect, connected care DMS, which is the, this is a minimum solution. I have to connect, but you know the, the the benefit of this is you can control you know the from the center for the monitors that you have in uh, two IDB monitors in the school. Also, you can send alarms or you can distribute you know, the contents from there. So, for example, if there is fire, you can just send the whole you know, the, you know the classroom the fire alarm. So, that's the another, another benefit of uh, advantage of the, this product. And also, you can see the, whether there is problem or issues of the, you know, the IDB from the you know, the center, like. Centralized, so we can, if there's IT de uh, department in the school, they can actually manage from there. What sort of pricing are you looking at for this? Uh, price for Say you're 55, for example. 55, uh, can I get the price yeah. separately because they're not, yeah. Because it was more like TV, so. I thought we would start in the home entertainment area. I'd like to introduce you to Tony Brown, our Chief Home Entertainment Marketing Manager, and Martin Kim, Hello. head of our um, in-store team. So I'll hand you over to yeah, I'll introduce oh. Shannon in a minute in the home area. So Shannon's our uh, marketing manager for home appliances. So I thought we would start in the TV area and then we'll hand over to Jim right. for the home appliances. Right. Oh, good, yes, yes. Shall we move this way? Yeah. Where are we going? Oh, I saw that. that. I saw that. Let's have a chat. Um, so we haven't we haven't rehearsed this at all, guys. No. So uh, my name is Tony. I'm the um, home entertainment marketing manager here at LG. Um, why don't I give you a bit of an overview of TVs first of all, and then um, my lovely colleagues here, Martin and Thomas, will probably do a far better job of demonstrating. And don't ask me any hard questions because I'm the marketing <laughs> guy, not the technical guy. Ask them the hard questions. <laughs> so um, has anybody got anyone here got an LG TV at home? Not even you, Dave. That's terrible. There you go. Actually, I've got, a, I've got one. An older one. <laughs> all right. Well, after you've heard all of this, no doubt you'll go out and buy one after it. So, um, TV technology—it's very complicated, but I'll give you the—I'll give you the overview to it. Um, lots of different types of tech out there. If you come over here a bit more, we'll start at the basic end. I think the guys do it a different way, but I'll give you the basic. End. So, we have. Good TVs, we call them. Better TVs, we call them. And our best TV down the end here, our OLED product. Our good TV is what you would know as a UHD 4K LED TV. And effectively, you remember the big TVs? You guys are old enough to remember the big cathode ray tube TVs? Yep, so there was a big, good, good. So I, I am old enough to remember. Yeah. So there was a big shift um, probably 10 years ago to um, LED LCD TV. So there was plasma, and plasma was fantastic, but it had some downsides. But then everything went to an LED LCD TV. And it's kind of a sandwich, right? There's an LED backlight that shines through an LCD color filter, and it gives you the pictures that you see on the screen. There. So our standard UHD entry model, as soon as the color comes back on it, always happens in demos, you can see it's a pretty good looking TV, right? But what we've done in our Q&ED range, our better range, is we've taken that standard LED technology and we've put colour filters and colour enhancers on it to make the colours really accentuated and we've actually filtered them as well with our technology. So this is what we call Q&ED TV. And like I said, the guys will come back and probably explain it a little bit more, but start at good, you go to better. And as you can see, there's some big screens here, and I'll tell you a little bit about what Australians are doing in terms of buying. But really, the star of LG, the star of the show, is LG OLED TV. So OLED TV doesn't have that LED, LCD sandwich to it. It basically just is self-emitting pixels. So these TVs here, the, sorry, these TVs, the QNEDs, are shining light through the filter. This TV here 
is like that thin because every pixel on this screen can turn on and off. And when you look at it closely, perfect. It's black, Everything, every single pixel is turned off on that screen. Here, there's still some light showing through, but now when the color comes through, basically color pops against a black background. So the black stuff is turned off, the color coming through is even more vibrant and it's very fast response time as well. So it's amazing for sport. So OLED is our best technology. We are the first company that actually started manufacturing OLED in big sizes 10 years ago, almost 11 years ago now. And it's really hard and expensive to make it. So we were the first company to crack it and we've pretty much had the market to ourselves um, for 10 years. We've got a competitor in the market now, but we are saying leadership in OLED and we make TVs as big as 83 inches and all the way down to 42 inches, which you can see some of them back there. There's even, OLED is so thin as a screen technology that there's a TV up there that the guys might show you that can actually bend. So we're saying it's a gaming TV. So it starts flat and you press the button and it can actually give, like bend around you like an immersive screen. And that's again, the benefit of OLED technology. So if I'm going on about that, it's because we're very good at it and uh, we've been making it for a number of years. So the other thing I can tell you about televisions is that Australians love them. So Australians continue to buy bigger and better TVs. Through the pandemic, um, not surprising, I suppose, when people were sort of trapped at home, um, they went out and bought, or they bought online, a huge number of televisions, and they also signed up to a huge number of content services. Thomas, will I mark up anything if I just no. show home screen? Th this, one's uh, okay. this one? This one? Okay. So, the other interesting thing about these TVs is that they are so smart these days. So, we call this the WebOS system. So, in the past, you would have had your free-to-air TV almost on the whole screen on the television. Nowadays, you've got all your um, content partners um, in Australia. So the KOs, the binges, the stands, all those sorts of content. And if you scroll down, you start to see content that either uh, you've been watching, being served up to you, and some of the key highlights from uh, the leading uh, content partners like Apple, Netflix, Disney, etc., etc. So effectively, Australians buying lots of big TVs and have been using heaps and heaps of these content services and around the world connected TV and this content space is really going crazy. So it's a big focus of the LG company going forward is to enhance this even more and take advantage of our amazing OLED screen technology. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of, I'm trying to talk fast. I'm trying to give you the overview. What's your average um, size now, Tony? This, this morning they were talking about 75 inch. Yeah. Is that still the growth? It's, oh, it's, uh, it's even 98, 83 inch it is, is massive. Australians, despite a tougher year this year, it's, it's uh, you know, everyone's feeling the cost of uh, living pressures. Even so, we're seeing demand for big screen TVs get better and better. I think probably next year, Dave, we might even say the average screen size is 75 inches. So it, to, to give you guys context, like it, you know, three, four years ago, it used to be like 46 inch was an average screen size, then 55s, but now this is a 77, isn't it? Oh, this is 65, this is a 77, isn't it? So they look, they look big. <laughs> so yeah, this is almost the average screen size for Australians these days. How about anyone else? Got any other questions on the overview? So good, better, best, OLED, Kings, um, amazing content. And Mr. Kim yeah. is going to do a better job of giving the details. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Tony. I'm, I'm Martin. Um, so, look, um, I've been with, it's, it's now my 24th year with LG, right? And uh, what I've seen over the years is just how we can actually develop uh, products even more every year, right? That, that they just seem to get better and better every single year. And, and that just blows my mind, yeah. Um, so, Tony was talking about the LEDs versus your OLEDs. Right. Um, anyone have an OLED at home? No. Okay. The big buzz is, is around OLED, and then I think what Tony was touching on that with LED TVs, there's a backlight that's constantly on. Okay. 
when there's a dark scene, what each of the sing uh, what each of the pixels try to do is actually block out as much of the light as possible to to show a dark scene, right? So they're preventing the light from being shone. But um, it's a little bit like when you try to sleep in the middle of the day with your blinds down. Uh, who's tried to sleep with their blinds down in the middle of the day? Yep. Does it ever get dark? completely dark. You need blackout blinds. Yeah, yeah you, without those, what you get is you've closed the blinds as much as you can, but you actually get light into the room. Why? Because you cannot totally block out that light. And that's one of the uh, limitations of LED TVs, is they are unable to do that. Right? Whereas with OLED, as uh, Tony mentioned, every single pixel we can turn on and off. Now, the significance of that is, if I actually get a white piece of paper and a red pen, and I draw on that white piece of paper, what red do I get? Pink. The exact red that mm. was in that pen, yeah? Right. If I get a gray piece of paper, same red pen, and I draw a line, what type of red do I get? Different. A different off red, isn't mm. it? That's exactly what light bleed does to your picture. So in the LED TV, you've got light constantly washing out the picture quality. Whereas in a OLED, you've got every, as the director or the producer intended you to see that picture in, that's exactly what you're getting, unfiltered, undiluted. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. And, and that's, I think, the beauty of OLED, right? Is you, you, a lot of people say, oh, but look, oh, I watch TV during the day, I know I've got a very bright room. I mean, you're seeing OLED TVs right now, and we're in a very bright room, right? And, and, and I would actually even argue, even when you look at the stars, can you see the difference in the amount of stars you can see here versus the amount of stars you can see there? Again, why? Because in that scene, you've actually got the um, light washing out all the, all the bright stars. Whereas in the OLED, because you can have one pixel totally bright and the pixel right next to it totally black, you're able to see every single uh, detail, right? And if you actually think about when you watch TV, what type of content you watch, Right? Very rare do you actually have a very bright picture for the complete movie. The only time I see that is when I'm watching documentaries with my boys. Right? Outside of that, movies, cartoons, there is so much black, right? And, and that's what really OLED excels in. Just any questions on that with OLED? No? All right. Um, and as Tony was mentioning, and we've got to be fairly quick, um, because of the OLED technology, we've got a product that's called uh, the Flex, right? Um, and what the Flex is, is it's a 42 inch OLED TV that you can watch as a TV, but because of that OLED technology, if you're into gaming, and, and do we have any gamers here? Yeah? Anyone interested? No, maybe, maybe not. Okay. My brothers are. If you were, okay, well your brothers, right? <laughs> what we can actually do is, with the flick of a button, you're able to, curve that screen, right? And you, you're only able to do that because why? There's no backlights in the back, right? Um, being able to curve, what that does is, I, I don't know if, um, if the guys in, in the uh, B2B room actually show, just explained about the curved monitors. Right? So when you're watching TV, you want to watch things that are flat. When you're uh, sitting a lot closer to the TV, right, such as a gamer, and if you've got a wide screen, your peripheral vision doesn't quite capture the edges, right? And if you're a competitive gamer, right, you, you're going to need to see things at an instant. And by actually curving the screen, your scope of vision is obviously going to be a lot closer. You don't yeah? get shot so much. Beautiful. And I think, I, I don't know if you guys <laughs> caught what Tony said before about the response time, right? Because there's no... LCDs that have to open and close to let light in and out, right? The response time on an OLED is so much faster than an LED or LCD TV, right? Because you're either turning on and off every single pixel, which is much faster than opening and closing uh, LCD pixels. Does that make sense? Mark, can yep. I suggest these guys here, if you want to go and stand there, mm. Martin turns it back to flat, you cool. can see from the side yeah. the change, yeah. it's, it's much yeah. more, uh, and film it if you want. Cool. Mm. It's like a see it to believe it product. So, so that is pretty cool. to flat. Yeah. Alright. 
And then look, um, <laughs> to close off, if we just go over to the uh, rollable TV. So again, look, this is another OLED TV. Um, it is, a, it is a, a number of years old, right? But uh, since, since we're, we're all looking at just how a TV actually rolls up, if you guys want to come a bit closer, right? So what this does is it's a TV that will actually roll into the base, right? And again, if you guys come to the side and you can actually see just how thin this uh, panel actually is, right? So come, come forward, right? Is you can just see how the mechanisms work on the back, right? Which is pretty cool. Yeah. So you can have it as a full TV, um, or you can actually have it in the mode that I'm putting it in, which is just uh, half up, which means you can actually have things like your weather, um, your, your time showing. You can even have uh, backgrounds like what? What is it? The, the fireplaces, Thomas? Yeah. Waves and then yeah. So. We think that's pretty cool. Um, I think recently some of some of the uh, gentlemen here uh, actually went into one of our uh, customers that purchased one of these. They lived in, in the penthouse of Barangaroo, right? So uh, yeah, that, that was quite an experience. The other thing that uh, we've recently launched, the other TV, is going to be what we call Stand By Me. Have you? And, um, Have you? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Right, and, and what it is, is it's a, um, how big is the screen? 30, 27. 27 inch TV, yeah? And uh, it is a touch screen, so you can actually use this uh, to, to watch your online content. Um, it is also portable, as you can see, battery operated there, right? And the cool thing about this is you can actually use it in the portrait orientation as well, right? And being touch screen. I mean, who, who here, um, you know, cooks following YouTube recipes? 100%. Yeah, 100%, yeah. right? Where do you, what do you use, a device or a phone? Yeah. Um, which takes up, I guess, precious bench top space, gets dirty, right, things like that. Whereas you can just wheel this around, right? And, and as you're watching it, not on a small screen trying to see all the detail, you're able to actually see the picture in a large format and go, wow, I can follow that very simply, yeah. Um, other things is if um, any of you play music, uh, I know Mike, my, my boys, they'll, they'll be starting, uh, I guess, music lessons very soon, right? But you can actually have the, the, the um, what, what do you call it? The music sheets, yeah? Um, actually displayed on you, right? Very simple to actually move up and down, right? Adjust the height. Um, as we said, it is height adjustable. Um, on here, was there anything I was missing here, Tony? Uh, Thomas, just on this? Yes, the suitcase version. Where's that? Suitcase version. Now, that's a uh, watch this space watch, moment. Watch this space. Well, awesome. It's, uh, it's available <laughs> in the US, but not here. It yeah, is, we, it we is. Are, we are cons yeah, we're, we're considering that at the moment and talking to our retail mm -hmm. partners about whether we bring that in. It has been launched overseas. Um, but this product and this concept is very, very popular. It's 100%. just launched in Australia. We're already running short on product. Mm -hmm. And um, globally, the US, it's going bananas as well. And it so is. it's such a unique product factor. You can, as, as Martin showed you, you can take it anywhere within your house. And we think that families are literally going to be fighting over. You know, yeah. I can just yeah, see my, my kids are going to be yeah. like, have you got the stand by me? No, <laughs> mum took it or <laughs> son took it. So No, no, because I know two people um, yeah, that I personally know, they're asking, look, can I get it at the moment? Uh, we're, we're trying to get as much stock as we possibly can. Right? So uh, great. Colors, or is it just at the moment, in that color only. Yeah. No? There, there is, there is other design and color options. We have a big trade show every year um, in Las Vegas mm -hmm. in January, and I think they might be presenting some other options. There. Are you moving into yeah. H A now? So can I ask you? So now. After we showed you all that stuff in TV, who's going to buy an LG TV? <laughs> OLED. <laughs> yeah. Nobody? Okay, well, I'm done. It is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Um, the, the, uh, Shannon, did yes, you want to? Oh, here you are. <laughs> Shannon. Hello. Now for the fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I love home appliances. Um, I thought we'd start in laundry category. And laundry used to just be your washing machine. And then it was your washing machine and your dryer, we now talk about something called the complete laundry solution, which is wash, dry and style. So 
Um, Stala, I guess, fits on the spectrum with laundry in between your washing machine and dry cleaning, but it's that step in between that you can do. Um, laundry is something you, you do, you have your clothes ready, you wear them out, and you, I guess it's something you do before you go out. Where Styler is a, it can be both ends of that spectrum. So you can style before you leave the home and, and refresh your clothes, but also when you come back from where you've been, it's that step before you go into a dry cleaner, you refresh your clothes so they're good to wear uh, again. So, Styler. what it looks like. This is a five garment styler. Um, it uses steam, heat mm. pump dryer, so it will refresh, de-wrinkle, relax the, um, the wrinkles in your clothes. It has a pants press inside it as well. You're able to insert little aroma sheets into the back to give that um, beautiful fresh smell. Um, it's non-plumbed, which is really handy, so you don't need to have it in a laundry attached to uh, plumbing. It's a, a drain yeah. tank and a yeah. water tank are something that you can independently um, use. Um, and like, I don't know, this time of year I put away all my winter clothes. It's something that I use every winter. I bring them back out again, I refresh them. At that time of year, it's not just about your high-end, you know, luxury garments. It is your everyday stuff. It's the mm. kids' school uniforms. It's not just clothes, things like blankets and pillows and fluffy toys for the sanitation, sanitary cycles, mm -hmm. um, bacteria reduction, cold and flu season, keeping things nice and fresh. Mm -hmm. That's the style. Yeah. And like yeah. dust mite and stuff like that also. The, of it. the dust mite? Dust mites, yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, allergen, there's a dedicated allergen cycle uh, in them and obviously the steam. Um, function rules. So if I could just add to that, you, with the styler, I guess, um, you know, so what was your name? Brian. Brian. So, so Brian. Right? Um, and, 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 you know, people that wear business shirts, yeah. right? You might wear it one day. It might mm. not necessarily be dirty, but it yeah. might have a bit of a musky smell. You might get some creases on your, mm. or, or, on your shirt, yeah? Uh, what you can do is you can put it into the styler. And what this does, as Shannon was, was explaining, is it's going to refresh your clothes with the power of steam. Now, what steam actually does to a crease, right, is when you're wearing clothes, all their fabric fibres, they start dying together. And when you, when you get a crease, it's literally the fabric fibres have been pressed, yeah? What steam actually does is it, it will fluff up your fabric fibres again. So what that does is, is it's decreasing, right, um, um, as it opens up or, or, or fluffs up your, your fabric fibres, yeah? And as it does that, what you saw with the styler was doing that shaking motion, yeah? As it's shaking that with the power of steam, now we don't have steam turned on at the moment, right? But with the power of steam and that shaking, it's going to refresh, it's going to deodorize, and it's gonna decrease. Does that make sense? Yeah. So people are, I don't know, people, you, you have all tried Korean barbecue, it's a bit of a thing, yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we love Korean barbecue, <laughs> but the, the smell. smell afterwards is like, man, how do I do? Rather than having to dry clean that clothes, you can actually chuck it into your style. Right? Yeah. So as you were saying, school uniforms, I know my kids are precious. You know, these days in winter, things get very, very cold. You can put it in here before the morning, they leave. Like getting you can a hug. That's it. <laughs> right? And um, the, the beauty of this is, is it uses a condensing drying system, so it's not a very harsh heat. Now, I don't know how much you guys understand about different types of dryers. Who's used a dryer? <laughs> oh, do you know what type of dryer? Is yours an upside down dryer stuck onto the wall? No. It's a heat pump, heat pump, heat pump, heat pump. Alright, so we don't need to try to convince you guys. But literally, there's two types of dryers, ventilation and heat pump, right? There's another one called condenser, but hardly anyone buys those anymore. But you've got ventilation, which is upside down, usually in a wall, right? And uh, they are usually quite cheap. Um, what you do is you get your clothes, chuck it in there, turn on the heat, and it just runs, right? It's similar to, it's got a very big heating element. It's got a big fan behind that heating element, so it uses high temperature, harsh, dry air, and it blows that through your clothes, right? Um, it's literally like if you get a wet sock, hair dryer, turn it on, right? And you go, Phew. that sock dries very quick. But what it does is it's literally blowing off the lint from that sock, right? And you get a lot of the steam come up. Right? That's exactly what a ventilation dryer actually does. What it's doing, as you're drying, and, and you know you get quite a bit of lint, it literally blows lint off your clothes, which means you're wearing out your clothes, as well as because of the high dry heat, you, you can, if you over dry, 
right? Damage the clothes. Remember my fingers, not spirit fingers, but, but as your clothes are drying, they will fluff up, right? And then once you start over drying, they will start getting brittle, right? I don't know if you guys have had the, the towels and the clothesline too long and it just gets really hard right you don't want to get to that stage whereas with the heat pump dryer much gentler and what you see in this uh wash tower is, is the largest front load washing machines at 17 kilos and then we've actually got the largest dryer now it's only rated at 10 kilos but that's only because the australian standards only rate to about 10 kilos right um physical size is exactly the same as the 17 kilo washing machine right but as i said the rating system just by australian standards only allowed to be rated by 10. cool thing about this is unlike if you've actually got a washer and a dryer stacked on top of each other if you've got that type of scenario your dryer controls are quite high now i'm not the most tallest i'm not the shortest right but for those people that may be uh, vertically, uh, challenged. vertically challenged, yes, politically correct, <laughs> right? They may struggle at getting into the controls a little bit. Whereas with the wash tower, you've got the controls right in the center. Right? Single unit, simple installation, biggest washer, biggest dryer. If I had time, I would have loved to have shown you the direct drive motor that runs the washing machines, right? But that's seriously going to be another 20 minutes, which we don't have. All right, <laughs> well, what, should we go? Yeah, that's Thank you. Yeah. Another one of my favourite categories. Come on, come on. All in, all in one tower. How cool, how cool is this? So uh, I think this is one of those products that we took a list of everything that people hate about vacuum cleaners and hand stick vacuum cleaners and went, all right, we've got a solution for that. So uh, my pet peeve with Vax is emptying out the canister, all that dust everywhere. Usually it can be quite tricky. So we put auto emptying. Mm into this. So basically the moment you dock this vacuum uh, onto the all-in-one tower, it sucks out all the gunk, all the dirt, everything that's inside, and you get a beautiful clean vacuum. No arguing with people in your household that jam the vacuum up, it just <laughs> does it for you. Um, the other uh, thing I think people don't like about vacuum cleaners is that the batteries can uh, run out quite quickly. Mm. So pretty much on most of our range and definitely on these towers, we include dual batteries mm. as standard. So um, no extra uh, plus for consumers. Mm. Uh, another new feature this year is the hot mop. So uh, mop, mop and vacuum head all in one. So it's a single process. So you don't need to vacuum and then come back and mop. It's all in one hit. Uh, and has a hot mop functionality if you'd like to hot mop the floors as well as some cold mop um, as well. Yeah, so um, who actually has a stick vac here? Who has the stick vac starting with a D? <laughs> <laughs> Chances are it will be. How much do you love your dice? You like it? It's okay? It's alright. Yeah, it's alright. Okay. Well, what what would you say is the thing that you, you don't like about your dice? It's so loud. Loud. Anything else? Trigger finger. Who likes your trigger finger? The fact yeah, that you have to constantly cool. hold that. You've got the. Yeah. You've got oh, like the I don't like. That. Oh, you don't yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone does. Yeah. Look, in all honesty, look, the Dyson is a great unit, um, but Dyson historically, when they created the hand stick vacuum cleaner back in about early two thousands, they created that as a spot cleaner, right? Because their majority of their business was the canister vacuums. You know, the the thing that has a cord and you got to drag out. Now, no one uses that these days, yeah. But back then, that was the oh, sorry. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Steph. All right. So Steph. Apart from Steph, <laughs> no one uses those anymore. Yeah, but. Literally, well, what's, what's happened was um, they actually first innovated right, a, a, a handheld vacuum cleaner that had suction power. Everything before then had no suction power, right? But they got decent suction power out of a handheld, but that was for spot cleaning. So when you drop something, you didn't want to lug your, your canister vacuum out. So, so you could just very quickly get that vacuum and clean and it would do its job, right? Unfortunately, that technology has continued until now, right? But people are saying, wait on, now, now I, I, I can actually vacuum much simpler with a hand stick vacuum, right? And the problem was the battery life now, why? Because, they, and that's why they put that trigger, 
right? So that you can conserve battery life initially when it was a spot cleaner. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the, they knew that battery life was going to be a challenge. So that they actually put the trigger. So it's a very, very, uh, you know, genius way of, 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 of managing and, and, and conserving battery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but that's how, how it all started. But they've continued on with that. Whereas LG, what we've seen is, hey, look, there's a couple of opportunities that, that, that we can improve on, right, with ours. So things about, um, you know, having, coming with a stand. So, you know, with your Dysons, I'm pretty sure you had to put holes in your walls, yeah? I'm sure you'd love doing that, yeah? Renting, is that an option? Maybe, maybe not, yeah? Um, the other thing is, for those, everyone here, right, um, what usually gets stuck in, inside here? Hair, and I'll tell you what, for me, it doesn't matter whether it's my hair, my wife's hair, my kids' hair, and hair from I don't know everywhere, right? I don't care. When you have to clean out hair, it's just something I don't like doing. I, I, I don't know, does anyone go, yep, I'm going to clean out the hair out of my thing, no, right? But this is what we can do. With LG, we've actually got a very, very clever way of not having to touch all of that to even remove. Wow, that's pretty cool, right? And the interesting thing is, inside here you get much, much, you actually, after vacuuming, you get a lot of, lot of very small, fine dust stuck into that filter there, right? We can actually wash that with water. So that's pretty cool. But then this unit would take it to the next level because it is the self-emptying tower, which means you put it onto the dock and it will automatically uh, empty the actual dustbin for you. So you're never having to do that, right? I tell you what, life-changing, because I used to be the one that had to run outside with the field and empty my uh, uh, bin, right? I'll tell you what, once I've got this, and now that I've got that, I don't need to ever, ever, ever have to remove or, or empty that bin, right? Because when you do that, dust cloud might happen. Because I do actually suffer from a dust allergy myself. So, so what about emptying the tower? Mm -hmm. Good question. Right? So what it comes is with, uh, I, I guess, disposable uh, bags in the tower that you can actually remove and throw away, right? Uh, one bag would last in my household about uh, six months. Right, so we, depending on how dusty uh, your house is, like my, I've, I've got hard floors everywhere, um, depending on, but three boys. <laughs> um, so, so depending on, on how dusty it is, between about three to six months is what we usually say. All right, final thing, final thing. Sorry, did you want to speak no, no, anything about the... Interview. All right, all right. Very quickly, they, they're giving me the wrap up already. I'm, I'm already getting the eyes and then the... <laughs> Right, so look, I'll, I'll be super, super quick. But is, is this okay? Like, like you guys are understanding? Yeah. Right? It's not too technical. This this area is not for the public, is it? It's for the retailers? Yes, or? this is for retailers, for our agencies, and obviously VIP guests like we have today. Right, so. Anyway, um, who's got a fridge? Yes, everyone. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> who's used the fridge? Yes, everyone. Okay, what do you do in the fridge? You store food, right? And you want your fridge to store food for a long period of time, yeah? Do you know what causes food to go off quick? No power. No power. Yes, why would no power make your food go off Doesn't quick? Doesn't go cold. Why is because temperature fluctuation. Temperature fluctuation just makes food go off really, really quick. That the, the more fluctuation in the temperature it is, the faster the food goes off. This is why wine cellars traditionally were built underground. Why? Because what's heavier, cold air or hot air? Cold air, cold air, right? Hot air rises. So hot Cold air is, is, is heavier, so if you actually build a cellar underground, hot air can't penetrate in there, which means your wine is gonna remain at the same temperature for a longer period of time. Does that make sense, mm -hmm. right? What happens every time I open this door? Cold air. Yeah, cold air. Cold air is gonna drop, why? Because it's heavier, right? And law of gravity, obviously, comes out. So when cold air comes out, what goes in? Hot air. Hot air, right? Because of Newton's law of uh, action and reaction, right? I'm Asian, so I like Newton, <laughs> yeah. right? But what you can actually see is this. Cold air comes in, hot air goes in. What's happening into the temperature inside there? Temperature goes up. Sensors start kicking that in, goes, ooh, I need to turn on my compressor. Starts running more energy, wear and tear. Your food in the meantime is starting to go off much faster, right? And this is why, for us, we've actually got door in door. Door in door means you're not opening the full door. And this, on average, was up to about 41% less cold air loss okay then opening the full door oh. okay which means you're able to conserve the amount of cold air that comes out now we've taken that to another level 
which is the insta view okay and now what i can do is rather than opening the door and trying to find what is there i'm i'm gonna be like the fridge ninja i'm gonna see oh yep yep right there that's the one that i want bang in out minimum amount of i guess uh Cold air loss. Does that make sense? Yeah. We gotta run. We gotta run. Hundred percent. One final thing. Who likes whiskey? Anyone? Okay. Who likes whiskey balls? Ice. Ice. Ooh. Right. So what? Ooh. There we go. Where'd you find them? All right. So we've actually now got craft ice balls being made inside our fridges. Okay. So this model comes with ice and water through the door. Now, in a French door situation, um, you don't usually get uh, ice through the door anymore, right? What you usually get is water. Now, if they do have an ice maker, it usually takes up some space in the back here, which means you lose precious storage space. But we've actually got what's really cool, indoor ice maker, which is very slim inside here, in the free section. You still have enough space to put your bottle, 600 mils, fine, right? Um, and you're able to get water and ice through the door. Right. As I said, in addition to that, we've got a craft ice ball maker down here. Now, some people call it the wow factor, I might call it the wang factor, but at the end of the day, what this ice actually does is you put it in, it's a slow melting ice. Why? There's less area that comes in contact with water, which means the less or the slower it melts, your whiskey or whatever soft drink or whatever juice you've got is going to be diluted less. Make sense? Yeah. So craft ice balls in Shida. Now, I would love to spend much more time with you, but we we're go, saying right? no, you have to go, right? So look, it's been a pleasure. There are many people Thank here you. that can answer questions. Feel free to come up anytime. Thank you. Thanks so much, Thanks, Martin. Thank you. So